Hello guys and thanks for joining me once again today. Today we're going to talk about another Daily Wire uh, article here about the Kids Online Safety Act. <sighs> okay, so let's just jump into this. <laughs> All right, so this says a bill with bipartisan support will be introduced on the Senate on Wednesday that will require social media companies to add additional steps to protect children under the age of 16. The Kids Online Safety Act, co-sponsored by Tennessee Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn and Connecticut Democrat Senator Richard Blumenthal, seeks to increase safety standards in the wake of child safety concerns. Excuse me. I can already tell you right now I'm against this and I know that sounds wrong or funny or whatever, but I'll explain. Oh, so big tech has failed children and betrayed its trust it is not big tech's job to protect children. And when I say that, I say it, say it like this. Okay. I don't know what's in this bill. I'm going to have to go look at it and then do another video about what's in here. But typically when they do this kind of stuff, when the government's like, oh, it's for the children. It is almost never for the children. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, I'll have to go read it and find out. Let's see. The Kids and Online Safety Act to give kids and parents the tools and safeguards to protect against toxic content and hold big tech accountable for dangerous algorithms. Okay, look, the algorithm is just a... Okay, anyway, the proposed bill requires social media platforms to provide a safe default environment and to help prevent potentially destructive impacts. So they're supposed to provide a safe space online. The legislation requires independent audits and supports public scrutiny from experts and academic research to ensure parents and policymakers know whether social media platforms are taking meaningful steps to address risks to kids. Who, who's going to do this? Who's going to do this part? That's what I want to know. Because the last time we had uh, policymakers for these things, it was who? The WHO. Okay. It was people who did not, who didn't care about kids. All right. And so they just let all kinds of things happen still. This, this seems useless to me. Protecting our kids and teens online is critically important, particularly since COVID increased our reliance on technology. In hearings over the last year, Senator Blumenthal and I have heard countless stories of physical and emotional damage affecting young users and big tech's unwillingness to change. The Kids Online Safety Act will address those harms by setting necessary safety guide rails for online platforms to follow that will require transparency and give parents more peace of mind. What does this mean? See, this is this is what this is the biggest problem I have with this is nothing is really outlined. That's why I said I'm gonna have to go read the bill and see, and then I'll do a video and let you guys know what I found. Or we'll go through it together. That might be even better. Internet safety is a top priority for children. This measure makes kids safety and internet priority. Big tech has brazenly failed children and betrayed its trust, putting profits above safety. Seared in my memory and motivating my passion are countless harrowing stories from Connecticut and across the country about heartbreaking loss, destructive emotional rabbit holes, and addictive dark places rampant on social media. All of this, all of this is true. All of this is something anyone, anywhere can get into. Do you know what the actual answer is? It's not a law. It's not giving the government more power over your kids. It's not letting the government be your child's parent by making a law to control what your child sees and doesn't see. The answer has always been, will always be, and, and was always that the parents and the parent support system do this. Okay. When I was a kid, we had, we had all kinds of technology. We had the internet. You know what we also had? The, the internet was in my dad's room. If he didn't want you to use it or he wanted to see what you were doing, all he had to do was walk to his room. Your internet was limited, not just because of, you know, I grew up in the basically nineties, not just because the, the internet itself was limited, but because he set limits on it. All right. People out here 
need to teach their kids how to use this technology correctly. It's not the government's job to do this kind of thing. If we, as the people, get together and start saying, you know, I'm not using this toy, which is what Facebook is. Facebook is a toy. Even if you run your business on it, it's still a toy. Okay, that's that's the way I look at it. There, there can be other ways to run businesses online, and there have been before Facebook came around. Okay, it's just, it's not that hard. Anyway. So it is, it is not the government's job to go around moralizing and nannying things. Okay. It's not, <clears throat> it can punish for like negative things, but so far I'm not seeing much punishment here. This is just what we want to give kids a safe space. A what you're supposed to be doing. And guys, we already have laws in place that if you show things to a minor that you're not supposed to, you get in trouble. Okay. If you do things with a minor, you're not supposed to, you get this punishment and it's jail time. Usually, uh, this is just, it is unnecessary and they're wasting their time and, and stuff doing this. And this is what I mean by it's just so bloated. This is what I mean by it's so big. It thinks it has to do something about your kids. No, I don't want the government involved in my children's anything. Okay. I'm going to do that. If you're around kids and you see them doing stuff, you shouldn't say something to those kids. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're in a library and you see it, say something to the librarian. If the librarian doesn't hop up and do something immediately, go over there and continue to complain. Okay. That is how you make a difference. Kids used to know that anywhere they went, all adults were going to look after them and also chide them. Okay. And also to encourage them to do the right thing. Now kids walk out here and be like, well, you can't touch me, blah, blah, blah. Right. Or I don't think anybody cares about me because nobody says anything about what I'm doing or, or who I'm talking to or nothing. Nobody's, when I get hurt, nobody stops. And whenever I am trying to run away from somebody, no one helps me like this, this, we, the people coming together around the children is what makes a good nation. It's what grows kids up correctly. It's what does these things. Okay. Primarily parents, but parents have support systems. They have aunts and uncles, they have friends, they have things like that, where these people should be helping them too. And I do understand that there's a percentage of people who they're just bad people. They have bad friends and bad family. <clears throat> that that is a thing. Okay. And my answer to that is always you as the stranger can come in and make a difference there in some way. If you see this kid doing something, they shouldn't going somewhere. They shouldn't say something to the kid. If the kid doesn't listen to you, say something to somebody else. Whether you know it or not, whether you understand it in that moment, it may not stop the kid then, but you saying something down the line in their mind goes, you know, somebody told me one time I shouldn't do this and they're going to, they're going to fight against it a little while, but then later on, they're going to be like, maybe I shouldn't do this. Why would somebody tell me not to do this? Okay. That happens too. So you as a complete stranger can completely change somebody's life 100% or at least start them down a good road. And we used to know and understand this. We used to give this credence in our lives and now we don't because the government, we are just so in tune with this idea that the government should do it. When people say that's wrong, they say we ought to make a law. No, we should enforce the laws we already have, which is almost too many already. And then we as individuals should start dealing with individuals. And this is what gets me. So this is what gets me so riled up about this is that we are just consistently handing over pieces. Oh, the government will make this happen. The government will do this for me. The government provides this for me, this for me, this for me. As soon as before you know it, the government's doing it all for you. They can take it all away. They can make your life a miserable hell if they want to. And you're doing exactly what they want you to do. 
whatever it is, dance, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, whatever, because they can take your life away, your lifestyle away. Okay, so my, I always say, anytime this happens, even if it sounds good, I mean, this sounds awesome, right? We're going to make them pay. We're going to make sure kids can go someplace safe. We're going to make sure parents have tools. Guess what? Parents, the parents who are going to use these tools are already parenting their kids about technology. The parents who aren't, aren't even going to use it. So it's, it's, it is an, it's a null. It doesn't do anything. It just makes them look good in the eyes of people who aren't thinking about things. All right, guys, try and keep the government out of your life as much as possible. Whatever you can do. That is my, my thing about this always. All right. And, uh, thanks for joining me today. I want you to just, just remind you, pray and read your Bible today. Be prayerful about the kids in your life. Talk to their parents, their guardians, whoever it is, if they're, you know, not, you know, if they're adopted or something and ask them, how can I help you? In what ways can I help you keep your kids safe? And just explain, you know, I've been seeing these videos about kids and stuff. I don't believe, you know, just talk to people. If you're in a church, ask, you know, just, just start talking to people and asking, well, how can we keep these kids safe? Pray for the kids in, in, around you. Just pray for children in general, like, but you can be a voice of reason. You can be a voice of change, but you got to use that voice. You got to do it. You can't just walk by and be like, not my problem. Oh, well, too bad. These not my problem timeframes, these, oh, well, too bads are going to turn the, the place you live into something you don't even recognize. So anyway, remember guys, pray and read your Bible. I